Hello and welcome along to a brand new mini series on the channel with me, Daniel. We're taking on FM21 Mobile to celebrate the new game's release, and we have been appointed manager of Ballymena United as we take on a mini career in Northern Ireland. Of course, we had huge success with Cliftonville in FM20, and we're coming back to the country again to try and do something special. And Ballymena, of course, were one of the four options for our full game live stream series. Unfortunately, it didn't win but he's still going to get his chance to shine on the channel. So if you're looking forward to this mini-series, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Apologies in advance for my shoddy, shaky camera work, but the most important thing is the football manager. So today we're going to have a team introduction, we're going to have a review of what we expect in the series, and then we'll be back for some match action and a brand new season full of transfers when we come back for episode two. So to stay up to date with that and all the other content across the channel, please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts every time a new episode releases and every time we go live for our streams. Of course, our two long-term stories are well underway from the full game. You can catch up with those in the eye above. And of course, we had our beta stream with Wigan. We've got another one on the way this weekend. But let's go and get into Ballymena United. You can see we've been appointed manager. So let's go and see what the board expects for the season and what team we've got to work with. We'll talk through the reasons why they were in our live stream vote to start with then as well. But we've been hired as manager. We've been given our first break in management. This will be a slightly more laid back series. We will be a bit more live stream-esque. So if there are some errors and fumbled words, I can only apologise. You'll probably see me juddering about a bit. But let's have a look at the team report. That's the most exciting thing here. We're going to view the report. Oh, wow. There are three things on the positives. Morale is good amongst the players. We've got one of the youngest sides in the division and we're operating below our wage bill. That's good. That should give us some flexibility. The rest of the news is pretty bad. The work rate's poor. The physicality's poor. That surprises me with Falamina. We're not as fit as other teams. Our passing ability's good. So basically, physically we're worse. Technically we're worse. Mentally we don't work as hard. We're not as physical. We've got limited transfer funds. Not as good training facilities. It's not looking great, is it? Let's go to the suggested 11, see how that compares. And it gets to one of the reasons that I've gone for this team, is I had Shane McCartan who came over from Bradford, and I was hoping he was going to be a star in this game. They've got Paul McElroy as part of a swap deal. They've got good young players like Kofi Baumer. We saw him at Larne last season. He got a big move in our FM20 career. And it is clear early on that McCartan's a standout. The one man that's missing in this, though, is club captain Jim Irvin. Because he's a man we've interviewed over on the podcast. He's a lovely bloke. I'll put the link to the interview in the eye above. And he's our club captain. So we're going to try and get a bit more interaction from him. We're going to try and get him as an assistant long term. Try and get him on coaching courses. And where is he in the squad depth? Let's go to centre half. He is... Oh, so he's third choice centre half. That's not too bad. He's also second choice right back. So I'm sure he will have a part to play this season. But that's not immediately a good sign. But let's give ahead to our next message, which is the start of season expectations. And of course, we've got the two fan favourites we expected. Shane McCartan, Kofi Balmer. We're expected to be safe in mid-table. I'm quite happy with that. I did think initially they might want top half, but that's not the case. So we're quite happy with the expectations. I think they're realistic. And club captain is staying Jim Irvin. He's 35 years of age. He's an absolute legend. And we are going to keep him on board. He's not the quickest anymore. He can't tackle. He can't do a great deal else. He's a great penalty taker, as we know from the full game, and he's a brilliant leader. So as an under-21 Northern Irish international of days gone by, he's going to be a crucial member of the squad off the pitch, even if he doesn't get as much football on it. And of course, a lovely bloke. I'm not letting him go. But of course, that is the main reason we're here today. We want to meet the squad. We want to see who the stars are and we want to see what our budgets are. I'm going to break my usual tradition for this series just because I've not played the mobile game really that much. And I'm going to go and have a look at the player search screen for my transfers this year. There's not really the director of football stuff and that in the game, which makes it a bit harder. So I think we have to use player search to make it work. Though I will try and limit it to the transfer list, loan list, release players, and then the rest will try and find ourselves. But now we've put them in order of position, let's start by having a look at our goalkeepers. Ross Glenn Dinning is the first choice, and he looks pretty good. Mentally, perhaps not quite up to scratch, but good thrower of the ball. He's got great reflexes, good kicker, good handling, good in the air. I mean, he's got about everything you could ask for in a goalkeeper. I'm quite happy with him. Again, a Northern Irish under-21 international. He's not so bad at all, I don't think. So I've just moved myself slightly so we can move back and forth between screens. You can still see the star rating just under my head. And hopefully you can see our backup keeper, Jordan Williamson. 
Again, very solid. Mentally nowhere near as good. Not quite got the same ability physically, but definitely a solid enough number two. I'm not normally worried about backup keepers anyway. So to have Jordan Williamson, I'm pretty happy with. Let's move on to right back. We've got a youngster, Trey Hume, on loan from Linfield, the champions. Now, he's 18 years old and he's not rated well at all. No stamina for a fullback, which is a concern. Not great decision maker, not good positioning. And he's not the best tackling, to be honest. So I don't think he's going to be involved much. Let's be brutally honest about him. Let's move on to the next one. Hopefully it's a bit better. That one's Jim Irving. We know all about him. And he's a solid centre half, a solid right back. He'll be a squad player and he'll have a big action off the pitch. We love Jim and he's going to be part of the squad, of course. Let's move on to the next one. Another loanee in Kieran Kelly. He's from Bohemians in the Southern Republic of Ireland League. And he's not too bad. Two-star ability. Solid backup centre-half again. Good in the key attributes. Tackling, heading, not so bad. Decisions and positioning, the lower side of all right. And fairly strong, fairly quick. If we need backup at left back and centre-half, I haven't got a problem throwing him in. And at this level, we've got to keep the backups to a minimum. So versatility for players like him and Irving are crucial. But now let's move on to the superstar, Kofi Baumer. Three-star ability, central defender. He's quick, he's a good decision maker, good in the tackle and not bad in the air. So potentially, if we put him alongside a big guy like a Jim Irving, he'd be all right. But this guy's got big potential as well, and that's something we're looking at. So a really good young player, got that big move in FM20, of course, to Lan. So we'll be keeping our eyes on him, and we'll be hoping he remains in the Northern Ireland under-21s and continues to be a star for us. Let's move on to Andrew Burns, another central defender. Again, the key attributes all right, not the strongest perhaps, but at 28 years of age, I'm sure he'll be part of the squad again. Unless we can find really good players, I can't see much happening with these guys. So although he's not really a rounded player at all, he's a very good central defender. And if we need him, we'll keep him in the squad. That leads us on to Scott Whiteside, probably not quite as good. For me, I always look at the key attributes. And here, not the greatest tackler, not the best in the air. So for me, Scott Whiteside not so involved. Let's move over to right back for McGrory. He's a key player for the side in real life, and he's a good player here as well. A wing back, two and a half star ability. He's got good pace, good stamina, decent positioning. Moves well up and down the wing, of course. Probably not the best technically, but again, he'll do a job. He might not be a starter for us. He might be more of a second choice right back, particularly with him naturally being a wing back. But it does open up the back three. If we get the right players in, he could be involved in that. On the left hand side, another wing back and wide midfielder in Stephen McCulloch. He's very quick, very agile, good stamina, decent tackler. I mean, he does all the basics and I'm not too unhappy to have him in the squad, to be fair. I think he's all right. Most of these on one year deals, but McCulloch looks a decent player. A left back, we've also got Ross Redman. He's two and a half star ability. Not the best tackler, but very strong mentally. Good teamwork, good leadership, good decision maker. 30 years of age now and solid enough physically. We're happy enough to have him in the squad. And the star centre half should be this man, Johnny Addis. Two and a half star ability. Oh, he can't tackle. Good stamina, good strength. Maybe a candidate for a holding midfielder. Can we find a shape that fits that in? Have him as an anchor man. He's good in the air still as well. This has given us a lot of options in terms of formation, to be honest. We're going to look at Tony Kane, a central midfielder. Good decision maker again. Fairly creative, fairly good leadership and strong. Another solid player. I think what we're seeing here is not a lot of standouts, but a lot of good footballers. If we go on to Ryan Harper next, he's a 31-year-old. Good leadership, good passer of the ball. Not a great deal else and not rated the best, but another good squad player. No complaints about him. And let's move on to the other midfielder. Josh Kelly, two-star ability, 21 years old this time. Different profile, a bit better technically. Good technique, good passing, fairly good in the air, good decision-making but not much else and physically struggles a bit. So that might be something we have to bear in mind when we're putting together partnerships. James Knowles, 27 years old. He's not a bad midfielder. Again, two-star ability. Good tackler, good passer, good shooting. Three key attributes. Very good stamina for two or three games a week, particularly in the first condensed season. Decent pace, very good strength, good teamwork. I'm happy with him. Owen McKeown is half a star ability at 23. He's not going to feature at all looking at him technically and physically as well. Leroy Miller, a key player, three-star ability, very good player across the board. Good pace, good strength, solid mentally, can pass, he can dribble. He's a number 10 as well. So again, tactics, we have to think of that. 
Don't forget that Palomina side in FM20, the first season. They played that three at the back and then the five-man midfield with a holding midfielder, centre mid, attacking mid. And we just couldn't cope with it. And this guy was crucial to that. So we're going to try and make him crucial in our tactic as well. He's one I'm looking forward to working with. Jude Winchester, a good player at 27. Two-star ability, good stamina, aggressive. Decent passer of the ball as well. Moved well. Another one will get involved in the squad for sure. Paul McElroy, he's out on the left wing and a striker. He came in as part of a swap deal for Crusaders in the summer. And I'm looking at him, he's quite quick, he's quite direct, but he's got all the key attributes to be a left winger. I don't fancy him so much as a striker because he can't finish. But on the left hand side, I feel like he could be a good squad player. Certainly, possibly a good starter as well. Only two star ability there, but I quite like him. I think he might fit in the squad. We've then got Ryan Wade, another two star ability striker this time. Not the best finisher, good passer of the ball, good in the air and fairly quick as well. But he's a backup player at best, if we're being honest. Let's move on to Shane McCart on the star. Three and a half star ability, number 10. Came in from England in the summer. He was playing at Bradford City. He is a Northern Irish international and he is a superstar. Good passer, good shooting, good dribbling, good technique. Leader, strong movement, strong pace and decent strength and stamina. He's my number 10 for the year. Fantastic player. So I'm looking, thinking him in the middle, McElroy on the left. Probably need a right winger, but we've got three strikers to choose from as well. So let's start with Cathair Friel, 27 years of age. Three-star ability, he's a natural poacher. He's great finishing, good dribbling, good technique, decent in the air. And a very quick as well. He's got okay stamina, I like him. He's my starting striker for sure. Let's have a look at the other two. Kenny Kane was a bit of a hero in the cup semi-final last year. He's quick. He's decent in the shot. Fairly good substitute, I think, for Friel. Only one and a half star ability, though. And then Joe McCready, who has two star, but he's more of a target man, I think. Not good finishing, good in the air, and decent decision making and movement. He might be one I sacrifice, to be honest, though he is on a two-year deal, so we might have to keep him for now. But that's the Balamini United squad. They're recommending a 4-4-1-1. For me, I don't know. I'm sort of torn on it. We definitely need a number 10 and a striker. Do we go two up front with a narrow diamond, but then that puts McElroy out of the squad? Or do we go for a sort of 4-2-3-1, perhaps? We love the 4-2-4 with Cliftonville. That could be an option, particularly with defensive fullbacks. But there's a lot to think about here. So let me know what you think of this Balamina side, what you think of our plans for the season. As you can see on this screen, we've got a 5,000 transfer budget and 775 quid a week in wages. So what we're going to do, rather than focusing on these player search screens, as I see Ryan Schott and Hero of the Wigan save, and I know a few others of you have mentioned him as well, he's worth too much in terms of value. So what we're going to do, we're going to raid the free transfer market, see if we can get a few in. Our top players are on about 250 a week. So even if we can get three key players in, I feel like this could make us as a good squad. We're going to go through to the start of the season and we will be back next time to review our transfers and play our first game with Balamina. So again, apologies for the shoddy camera work, but if you did enjoy this introduction, please do put a thumbs up on the video. They will be a bit shorter after this one, of course. No load of players to go through next time. And we're just going to try and get through the season, see how we do with Balamina. Can we creep into the top six? Can we have a cup run? Who knows? We'll wait and see. If you've played FM21 Mobile as well, let me know what you think of the game so far. Subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts as daily content releases on this channel. This series will be back tomorrow as well. We'll try and find a regular slot for it from episode two. And we'll have daily content from our two long-term stories as always. 3.30 every day, the head coach and Bangor City rotating. But thank you as always for giving this new series a try. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure I'll get better at it as we go along. But thank you so much for watching and giving this one a go. You can catch up with a podcast channel in the eye above, including that interview with Jim Irvin, of course. And we will be back tomorrow for more Balamini United as we start the competitive season in Northern Ireland. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.